Uh, radioactive isotopes definitely can be uh, naturally occurring, so a common one that you saw before uh, in a previous example was uranium-92. This goes down to thorium-234 and 90. So to balance this, I need an alpha particle in order to balance that reaction. Uh, this can react again going to 91 and 234 uh, plus, now if you balance this, uh, you'll need a minus one here and a zero here, that's a beta particle or no electron. This can react again, emitting another electron. So this would be an isotope of the original uranium. The original was 238, this is 234. If you balance this out, it has to be a beta particle because 92 minus 1 will equal 91, and 234 plus 0 will equal 234. This will react and react and react until it gets down to lead, which is stable, 82206. So this is a naturally occurring process. We use uranium to date the age of the Earth and uh, other such things in our universe. And this is called a radioactive decay series. A radioactive decay series. The radioactive items or elements here will keep on reacting, keep on reacting until it gets to something stable. Then it will stop. And that's very normal. Whenever we find radioactive uh, elements in nature, they're constantly decaying until eventually they become a stable isotope. However, that could take, like in this case, many millions of years. So, uh, for example, if you have like millions of tons or several tons of uranium, uh, you might only find in that deposit like a gram of lead. That's how slowly this sort of thing will happen. Um, part of this process here, as we're going through this process, we'll make a couple interesting isotopes. A polonium-210 and a lead-210. Those are uh, still radioactive isotopes in this decay series. Something that's interesting is that these isotopes are also found in cigarette smoke. <coughs> so I don't know if any of you like to puff up a little bit, but these are uh, found in cigarette smoke, which is derived, of course, from the uranium. Uh, that uranium, it's hard to say where that's from. It could be trace amounts from fertilizer or other places in the tobacco fields. Uh, but this is a possible link to cancer, like the, that kind of lung cancer, and that maybe there's radioactive elements that are causing problems in your body, even if they're giving off uh, low penetrating power alpha particles, those are still enough uh, to cause damage when there's no protection in your body. Another uh, interesting thing uh, with the decay series, a uh, much smaller one though, uh, has to do with our atmosphere. One of the first two most abundant uh, compounds in our atmosphere would be, or in our air, is nitrogen and oxygen. Number three is uh, argon. So our argon has, uh, our air has argon in it. Uh, if you knew that, you might have wondered, why the heck is there argon in it? Well, the formation of our Earth, there was a lot of potassium. And if this undergoes electron capture, let's see what it makes. Well, it makes 18 and 40. And if you look at your periodic table, 18 is argon. 
so that's where we believe the proposed decay series for the presence of argon in our air. Coming from the formation of the Earth, of a lot of potassium capture, going through electron capture to make the argon that we find in our air. Okay. 